this edition, you're thinking of booking a beautiful cruise aboard one of the Cunard ships. You look at the websites and then you're bombarded by a whole range of different cabin choices. There's magnificent two-story suites, inside cabins, outside cabins, balcony cabins. How on earth do you decide which one to go for? We're here to go through the various options and help you out. Welcome back to the Ritzy Travel Guide. So you've got your eye on a Cunard cruise, but you've got absolutely no idea which cabin you should book. They're all at different prices, different sizes, and different characteristics. So we're here to go through this baffling array of choices. And since we've just come back from a cruise aboard the Queen Mary 2, we'll focus on that. But the information in this video is applicable to any of the Cunard cruise ships across their fleet, whether it's the Victoria, the Elizabeth, or the newest of them all, the Queen Anne. Now, the best way to disseminate this information is to look at an actual cruise that's taking place. And the cruise we're going to use as an example is a seven-night itinerary on the 2nd of June 2024 aboard the Queen Mary 2. So here are the prices in staterooms, a total of six in all, starting at £839 for the inside, right up to the most expensive, the Queen's Grill Suites. We're going to look at all the price bands one by one, but there is an important point we have to mention right from the outset. And that's for those who are not familiar with Cunard, that the type of cabin you book affects two things. The first one is obviously the size of the cabin, and the second, which dining room that gets you access to. Right, let's take a look at the cabin choices. We'll start at the cheapest and work progressively up to the most glamorous. So the inside cabin, here is the floor plan. You can request the bed to be configured either as a double or two singles. The cabin size is quite workable, though small. You get a desk, side table, fridge, kettle, and hanging space. The wardrobe size we found large enough. So all in all, yes, it's small, and as the name implies, it's an inside cabin, so no window. To some people, that might feel claustrophobic, but other cruisers with years of sailing behind them say it really doesn't worry them one jot and happily book an inside cabin because of the value for money. Cabin size is 155 square feet. Next cabin up is the ocean view. In our example cruise, the price has moved up from 839 to 1099. That's an extra 31%. So what does that get you? Here is the floor plan and images. There's a slight step up in cabin size to 180 square foot. You get similar decor to the inside cabin and you get a window, aha! You get a double sofa, and again, fairly ample wardrobe space, all things considered. The bathroom is very similar to the inside cabin. Now onto cabin type 3, the Britannia balcony. Going back to our example cruise, there's only just a small step up in price from the ocean view. In fact, it's only 4% more, and you get a balcony and a larger cabin. You've got similar decor as the first two, but it all feels a little bit more spacious. Okay, so these first three cabin grades, inside, ocean view, and Britannia balcony, all have access to the same restaurant, which is the Britannia dining room. On the Queen Mary 2, it looks like this, and is a gorgeous, majestic, sweeping two-story hall that has a marvellous look and feel to it. Over 85% of all cruisers on the ship book the first three cabin choices, and therefore dining will be in the Britannia room. So almost everyone you'll see on the ship falls into the first three categories. Okay, before I forget, please do remember to subscribe to our channel as we have several fascinating videos in the pipeline coming up over the next days and weeks. Okay, on to the next category, the Britannia Club Balcony Cabin. Now this has a big increase in price from the standard balcony to the club balcony. It's going to cost you an extra 65% to get the club element of this. The cabin sizes are almost identical to the aforementioned balcony, but you do get an upgraded trim and access to a different restaurant, the Britannia Club restaurant. You get your own table for the duration of the cruise, meaning you can use it as and when you please, no one else is going to take it. Plus, if you're lucky, you may swing an invite to the Grill's cocktail party, or you might not. 
OK, we're now almost at the top of the tree. Next up, the Prince's Grill balcony. It's priced at 3149 for this sample cruise. Remember, you're now 3.7 times more expensive than the inside cabin and 65% more expensive than the immediate category down, the Britannia Club. Here's the floor plan. You've now moved up to 290 square feet and the balcony is bigger. And for snob appeal, you now get access to the Prince's Grill, again with your own table and anytime dining. Here's the recent walkthrough I did of the Prince's Grill on the Queen Mary 2. You can dine anytime you wish between 6.30 p.m. until 9 p.m. Okay, we've now arrived at the very top of the mountain, the Queen's Grill cabins. Stateroom size has gone up from 290 square feet with the Prince's cabin to this, which is 390 square feet. Length is almost the same, but it has got wider. Now, once again, you do get your own restaurant, this time the Queen's Grill. It's open for breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as the grill's afternoon tea. You can choose practically whatever you like at the Queen's Grill, even go completely off menu, have lobster thermidor for breakfast if it so takes your fancy. Now, there are some cabin grades even higher than this, but we're not going to cover them in this video because they're so rarely available. We're talking about huge, split-level, double-floor, vaulted ceiling cabins, but those go years in advance. So, all that being said, which cabin should you book on a Cunard cruise? Now, obviously, I can't tell you how to spend your money, but that being said, there are a couple of glaring observations which jump out at you. For the vast, vast, vast majority of passengers, you'll be absolutely delighted with the first three cabin categories. You get access to the Britannia restaurant, which serves great food, as well as all of the rest of the ship. And when you get bored of that, there are still other dining outlets on board that you can go to. If you want to spend a bit more, then the club balcony does make quite a lot of sense. It's a lot less than the Princess or the Queen's Grill cabins, and you get a very similar atmosphere. Number two, if you're choosing one of the three cheapest cabin options and you're on a warm itinerary, then you may well appreciate the balcony. Imagine gliding through the Mediterranean. It is gonna be lovely sitting on that balcony, watching the scenery at close quarters drift by. But if it's a cold weather cruise or a blustery transatlantic crossing, when on earth are you going to use that balcony? For those cold weather cruises, just choose a cheaper cabin. Now, if you're determined to raid your piggy bank and pay up for either the Prince's Grill or the Queen's Grill, is entirely up to you. But if you're going to do so, you might as well go the full distance and pay for the Queen's Grill. It's only 17% more than the Prince's and you get quite a lot more for your money. Now, most importantly, we must stress again that 90% of the ship is open to all classes of passengers, no matter what cabin type you're in. You'll still get access to all of the beautiful facilities of the ship, even if you bought the cheapest inside cabin ticket. I hope this helped you. Please do remember to subscribe to our channel as we have several more fascinating videos arriving on our channel in the next few days and weeks.